make it sound like that. Don't make it sound like that. Okay, I admit it's not bad. It's just it's gonna squish you for I hope that she's gonna bust it. You know what's funny? I didn't even realize it was only black people until like I left and I was like Y'all don't y'all are Caucasian. What is what's going on? It's well, different. Do you think there's there's no Caucasian there? Mm, no. There's no white people there. There's like white there's like I had a white teacher. And then there's like, there's Puerto Rican. We have some Puerto Ricans. Um, there's some black people from France, <laughs> so they're different. <laughs> Poor thing. I'd be feeling bad for her. She can barely speak English. She be having to Google Translate everything. This girl that um, she was a freshman this year. Oh, Google Translate. No choice but to go to Oakwood, Mari. So I don't even know why you think it's a. It is far, and you could. I be taking three flights to get home. I t- only reason I took three is because I fly from Huntsville to Atlanta, Atlanta to somewhere else, and then somewhere else to San Diego. That's true. You could fly with somebody. I've always flown by myself, but I could have, like, scheduled it at the same time Talia leaves. But she always leaves, like, like, they give you a certain time, that she, a certain day that she has to be out. And she leaves, like, a couple of days after that. Because she knows people that live there. So she just be staying with them. And me, I'd be. So people where? In Atlanta? No, in Huntsville. Um, you know the Richardsons? You've probably seen them, and you just don't know their names. Their, their two sons, Brandon and Jalen. Yeah, I've probably seen them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why did they just go black? Huh? Why did they just go black? I don't have time today, honestly. Hi. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. No, no, no. They just called. They were giving you guys in there. Oh, really? <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> LOL, chill. See, this is why I can't have fun. It lags. That's weird. There's also like you can take videos. You can take like any of her hair. Yeah, right here. Yeah. But it's typically more so. That's awkward video. taco because that's not. Oh, yeah, this one. It's done. Oh, dang.
way I am. Let me change for a minute. There's a car in the parking lot. Spot a car still running. You left the car running, please. Uh, I put, 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 put. The car is a BMW.
God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Amen. Even though the earth be removed, yes, sir. and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, Amen. though the waters roar and be troubled, Amen. though the mountains shake Amen. with its swelling, Amen. there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Amen. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Yes, sir. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Yes, sir. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Amen. The nations rage. The kingdoms were moved. Uh -huh. He uttered his voice. Yeah, yeah. The earth melted. Yes, sir. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Come, behold the works of the Lord, yes. who has made desolations in the earth. Mm -hmm. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. Mercy. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, yes. I will be exalted in the earth. Uh -huh. The Lord of hosts is with us. Yes. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yes. <laughs> to move freely among us. Come dwell in each of our hearts, O oh Lord. May we encounter your grace and your mercy, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us turn in our hymnals, the hymn number 612, Onward Christian Soldiers. And we will sing first, second, and fourth verse.
morning. You have to accommodate those that are getting up there in age. Happy Sabbath and good morning. I'm so glad to see your smiling faces on this Sabbath. I was not planning on being here today, but God so ordained, as I had told you when I was here on the 3rd, that I wouldn't be back until June 3rd, but I'm here, praise God, and I'm glad to be with you today. I miss you folks. But as the word says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How about you? Amen. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of our pastor, Shelton Kilby, and you know myself, Jacqueline Lawrence, will be with you for a while. And I'd like to acknowledge any visitors that we have. I have some cards here. I have an individual named David Laura. Can you raise your hand, David, and tell us where you are? Welcome and happy Sabbath. When we greet one another, make sure all of you that are around David, go and give him a greeting, give him a hug, and tell him happy Sabbath. We also have Pastor and Mrs. San Fring Pong Manso. They're from Kansas Avenue in Riverside, but they're here today because their son is in the Navy Hospital. So Pastor and your wife, would you please stand so we can acknowledge you? Pastor Fring Pong Manso, God bless you. Thank you for coming with us today. And we have a longtime former member of 31st Street, Mrs. Jean Myers, and her daughter, Mrs. Karen Ballette. Jean Myers and Karen, welcome. Good to see you. Look lovely today. And of course, I see young pastor, uh, sister, sister's grandson, and his name just escapes me. Kyle. Kyle. Oh, Kyle. Stand up, pastor. Look at my son. He done grown up and got slender and looking all pastoral. <laughs> Welcome back, native son. We're so glad you're here today. And I know that we might have some armed service members. If there's anyone in the house that have served in our military with we honor this Memorial Day weekend, we'd like you to stand so we can say thank you. And, and Al Johnson, stand up. Amen. Let's give them another. And there's Charles Johnson. Thank you so much, Dr. Freitas, Brother Hale. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, my sister. So at this time, you know it is our custom that we get up and greet one another in the name of Jesus. Give everybody a holy hug and a Sabbath kiss. And let's say happy Sabbath to one another. And Elder Ruth, thank you. Let us go in 
excited to be in the house of the Lord. The fellowship is still buzzing. Amen. Well, that is a good thing. It is a good thing that we can dwell one with another and fellowship together and be glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I have just a few announcements for you today. I want to just invite all of you who are here and have don't have dinner plans. We always provide a nice vegetarian lunch following the service. And so we want to extend that invitation to you. Please see that. That's announcement number two in the bulletin. So the lunch will take place just after our service. And I want to just say, ask you a question. How many of you like to study your Bible? Amen. You like to study your Bible? Well, we are going to be starting an afternoon study. Anybody feel good about that? Okay, well, I'm going to try it one more time. Anybody feel good about studying the Bible? Amen, amen. amen. Well, we want to get you more and more encouraged and inspired to do so. And in such, we have an afternoon study following the lunch each week that we'll, we'll be starting. It'll be two different classes, one which is Sabbath School Take Two. So if you weren't able to make it to Sabbath School in the morning, you want to come and still get the beauty of the lesson with believers, we'll have the lesson in the afternoon, Sabbath School Take Two, or if you want to just extend the high points of what you heard earlier in the day, we'll be able to discuss those in the afternoon. But the second part of that at the church at study is that for those of you who just want to go back to the basics, fundamentals, or you have someone that you'd like to invite to, invite to just get familiar with the Word of God, not because they've been here and only know all the Adventist colloquialisms of things, just back to the basics. We will be offering that class as well. So we just want you to come, stay, fellowship, dwell one with another, study together, because the church that studies together is the church that, amen, amen. And the next thing that I want to ask you about, how many of you have had the opportunity to visit the community service program that 31st Street Church has on a Wednesday morning? If you've been a volunteer, let me see you raise your hand. Wow, I see only a few hands. There is an exciting, exciting program that happens here every Wednesday here at the church. We serve over a thousand families 
and people, I should say people, not families, but over a thousand people receive food here from our church on average in the course of one month. That's something to be happy about. That means that we are filling a need. And when you come, you just kind of get inspired. I have a long day on Wednesdays because it starts pretty early in the morning. But then when I came by here just this last Wednesday morning, uh, already before 8.15, the uh, food bank had already come and with a big tractor trailer truck, dropped off a pallet or two or three of different food items. But then comes the volunteers to start bagging food, to start sorting and separating, and then the food is distributed. And if you would like to be a part of that, you, we have volunteer opportunities for you. But more than that, we are also in need of capable and able hands. Because we have some individuals here who have been faithfully serving, but we wanna be able to assist them in better serving our church and our community. And so we need male or strong female volunteers to help just for one hour on a Wednesday afternoon. If you could help us out between the hours of uh, 11.30 or about 11.30 to 12.30, 7.30 to 1, take one hour in any of those times. And another hour if possible. But the big point is, is that we have a stretch of time later in the morning into the afternoon where we really need help on uh, the cleanup and the reorganization to prepare the building back for the Wednesday evening program, which is We Wednesday when we have a nice community dinner. So there's lots of opportunities. And if you've never had a chance to say, hey, I want to do my ministry by making it very practical, this is your opportunity to do so. This is a thriving ministry here at the church. It's one of our most external ministries because external is important. I would almost dare say even more essential because then we have an opportunity to extend what it is that we have inside the building to make it go outside the building, amen? So I just wanna invite you to participate in those ways. And um, I'm gonna ask Pastor Lawrence if she would just put her hands over her ears because she wasn't supposed to be here today to hear this next message. All right, hands are duly over. And Brother Latham, if you could do the same, thank you. We know that we have an exciting event that's happening on the 8th of June. And so we just want to let you know that the committee that is working to, to make that special day happen, uh, if you could see myself or Sister Terry Drummond or Sister Esther Biamonte, come see us so that we can combine and put together all of our contributions and things together that will be making that beautiful gift and acknowledgments happen for Pastor Lawrence. So we just invite you to see each of us by department or individually so that we can collectively come together and to, to give honor where honor is due. Amen? I just want to welcome you again to church today, and I pray that your blessing will be here. The blessing that you brought will also be the blessing that you give one to another. And then I'll invite up uh, Sister Kilby for our children's story. Is that the next thing on our list? I believe it is. And so, before that, we'll have Pastor Kilby. Happy Sabbath, everyone. That's weak. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, indeed. I have All of this energy I've been feeling from the first Sabbath I came here, I walked in this door, and about three steps inside the door, I knew I was in the right place because there is an energy here. You can't fake energy. It either comes out or it doesn't. And so I am blessed to see you and blessed for this Sabbath day. I want to uh, make a couple of announcements. On next Sabbath, uh, your pastor will be away. I have a grandson who's graduating, and he didn't ask me, could I come? He said, I'm looking for you to be there. So I have to be there for his graduation. Um, our speaker for next Sabbath will be Dr. Uh, Jackson. Uh, he is the department chair in the HMS Richards Divinity School. Um, Dr. Jackson is a very fine speaker. He's spoken here before. 
and he's consented to come and be here in my place. Also, I want to, again, celebrate uh, Sister Pastor Lynch Lawrence. I'm still, uh, forgive me, Pastor, I'm, just, I'm, I'm still rehearsing. Uh, I, as I said before, I've known uh, Pastor Lynch for a long time, and she told me she's leaving, and I don't know, something in me said, pray about it, and make sure it's God's will. So some of us were talking this morning, if she doesn't cross the state line, it's God's will. If she decides to cross the state line, it's still God's will. But we hope that if it's his will, she will remain here with us. And I hope you'll pray about it also. This morning we have a graduate, um, Kyle. I don't know Kyle, but I've received a message this morning that, um, where's my lady friend? Oh, here she is. Okay. And uh, we didn't get a chance to celebrate his graduation, but we're going to do it today. And amen. Yes, let's give him a hand. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. So before um, I get to Kyle, we also had another graduate that we did not know about. Um, we just found out about her today. Um, so I'd like to ask her to come up. Her name is Kim Coles. Um, and she's been here for about a year. So her son is Hamed. Hamed, will you please stand up? Um, and you guys have seen him around. He's also in Pathfinders and usually here every week. Um, so we just wanted to congratulate Kim on graduating. She graduated last night. Um, she graduated from San Diego City College in cosmetology. So we just want to congratulate you. Now we'll have uh, Mr. Kyle come up, Pastor, Pastor Smith. <laughs> so Kyle is no stranger to any of us. He grew up here in this church. So I'll go ahead and read his little bio just to give you a little reminder. So Kyle Devin Smith, he graduated on May 5th with his Master of Divinity from Andrews University. <laughs> um, he also did some studying abroad at Adventist colleges, um, Hebrew, sorry, Biblical Hebrew Studies in Jerusalem. Um, he obtained his B.A. in theology from Oakwood University in 2016. Um, while at Oakwood, he served as the um, president of the United Student Movement. He also served as the executive vice president of the United Student Movement. Um, while at Andrews University, because of studies, he just volunteered at the Benton Harbor Highland Avenue SDA Church. Um, he's been very active throughout his student career. Um, his favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29, 11, um, and he did graduate on the honor roll at Oakwood University. Um, he is the son of Lloyd Smith and the grandson of Nola Bryant. And we just want to tell him congratulations on your graduation. Thank you. Before I have the kids come up, 
we used to do this at the church where I was, at Park Hill SCA Church. So we ask all the members, if you have a dollar or two, to hold them up so the children, as they're coming down the aisle, they can collect them, and this will be their basket for their offering. So I would like for all the kids and all the parents, grandmas, grandpas, aunties, uncles, sisters, brothers, grab the money, put it in the basket. She gonna take the basket. Okay, you go get the money. She's gonna take the basket and let y'all just drop the fine. Go ahead, honey. So if you wave your dollars so the kids can, excuse me, so the children can pick them up as they come down the aisle and she's gonna hold the basket and we're just gonna drop it in there. Kids, come sit down to the front cause we're still gonna have a story. You want me to take that? Uh, okay, I'll hold that. Go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Is that, we have some more. Here. There's some more. She's, 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 there's some more money. <laughs> this, this is funny. This is good. This is good. <laughs> she's enjoying this. I, I love it. Okay, where's the baby? I know we got some babies in here. I don't see any babies coming down. Okay. Go, go get that. Okay, did we get all the money? Oh, this is gonna be good. Because we're gonna use this money for the children's, this is gonna be children's church. So we're going to use this money for the children, for whatever their needs are, whatever offering, wherever it goes. This is for the children, and I would like for this to continue, because um, this will help them for all the little things they have to do and get in. Because the Lord, you know, he blesses them too, so we need to help them a little bit. We have a young lady here with some money in her hand. And so when they get ready to take up the offering, I'll just leave the basket up here for the deacons to take when they um, close the Sabbath. I mean, when they um, take up the offering. Okay, let's kind of group. Can we move down a little bit? Let's all come together. Let's all come. Come on, boyfriend. Let's all come together. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Oh, wait. Uh, now, see, I'm like the pastor. When he says happy Sabbath, he wants to hear everybody say happy Sabbath. So, when I say happy Sabbath, I want you guys to let your church people, family out here, hear you say happy Sabbath. So, I'm going to say happy Sabbath one more time, and then you go ahead and say happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay, we'll work on it. Okay, we'll, we'll work on it. So, one more time. Happy Sabbath. Oh, amen. We worked on it. Good. I have a story for you today, and this story is not going to be a Bible story, but it's a good story. It's about these three girls. And these three girls, oh man, they loved each other. They did everything together. They climbed trees. Yeah, we cli they climbed trees. We threw rocks. Yeah, yeah, we threw rocks. Rode bikes. We could shoot marbles. We can shoot marbles like the guys. But we played jacks too. Y'all probably don't know about jacks, do you? Okay, well anyway, these three sisters did everything together. And there was this one sister that was the leader of the group and whatever she said, we did. But sometimes when she said what we were gonna do was not always the right thing to do. So the others would follow. Then we had this thing about when the mother would say, well, who did so-and-so? 
Not me. Not me. Not me. So, and then mother would go, well, who spilled the milk? Not me. I did. Not me. There was a whole lot of me. We had that me. That me was with us all the time. Every time something went wrong, it was not me. We couldn't get rid of not me. So all that not me, it didn't pay off too good for us because every time something happened, spilled milk, broke something, knocked over a plant, left the bicycle on the steps and somebody tripped and got hurt. It was always not me. So mother decided, okay, well, if it wasn't you, and it wasn't you, and I'm sure it wasn't you, fine. Then I'm just going to fix this problem. Because the sisters loved each other so that we would not tell on each other. So we all got spanked. That's how mother solved the not me. Well, if you didn't do it, and you didn't do it, and I know you didn't do it, then I guess I'm just going to have to spank all of you. But that's what family is about. When you love each other, you don't tell on each other. You take it, no matter how it hurts, you take it. And then we would get mad at each other because it's like, well, how come you didn't say? Because you're the one that did it. And then they're like, because I didn't want to see you get in trouble. <laughs> but that's what love is. And that's what God does for us. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter where we go, he is always with us. But for you guys, when your mommy or your daddy, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, brother, sister, whatever. Whenever she asks you if there was something that you did, remember this story. Don't have not me, because not me does not pay well. It hurts. It hurts. So always be able to tell the truth. Tell the truth, because sometimes mommy or daddy, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle, they will just maybe not give you a spanking or put you on punishment. So if you just go up and just say, hey, I'm sorry, I did it. I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. I'm really sorry. Then they will not, you won't have to feel that not me anymore. OK? Did you like that story? Yeah. I did, because it reminded me a lot of not me back in the day. So um, I need somebody to pray. Anybody wants to pray? Of course. Come up. You have to speak aloud so everybody can hear you. So everybody, fold your hands. Fold your hands. And close your eyes. I say we're going to pray now. Share for our family to go safely, to grow strong and to free. And let the real children come to know us. The Bible says, come to eat strong to let Adrian Audi and Tyler come for the family we know he is in. Amen. Amen. Okay, go back to your seats quietly. Thank you. Have a happy Sabbath. Sabbath. You know, um, I love the old 
this song. <laughs> and especially when they have such an awesome, awesome message. You know, because when one door closes, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. I was going to say, when one door closes, God opens another one. And I, I'm just so thankful for that. You still can't hear me? Uh, they're going to have to turn the mic up. Now, can you hear me better? Amen. Do we know? 
to 30 striving and suffering with Christ only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and not in any way terrified by your adversaries, which is to them a proof or prediction. But to you of salvation and that from God, 
For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here is in me. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. It is time for prayer. And as we sing this song, those of you who feel that you need to come forward can come forward at this time. confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petition we desire of him. Would you bow your heads? You said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and return from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Our Father in heaven, we come on this holy Sabbath day to commemorate and memorialize the God of the Sabbath. We pray today that thou would bestow a very special blessing upon families who have come forward around the altar. We pray that you will bring peace in the, in the case of disturbance. They'll bring unity where there's disunity. We pray that I'll bring a blessing upon the children that you bless the babies in their mother's arms. You said, suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. May these occasions make impressions that will last for a lifetime. We pray for those who have limited abilities to maneuver and those who may suffer pain and have on medication because Jesus is a great physician. We pray for those that are sick and shut in, Brother Kurt Brown and Modesta, 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 Modesta George, Corrine Johnson, Estelle Johnson, Gloria Johnson. Sister Wilma Lovely, Sister Peggy Miller, Sister Katie Proto, Raquel Ramirez, and Charles and Edna Robinson. And we thank for the Brother Rose and Sister Robinson here today. Sister Sandra Russ, Vivian Woods, and Maxine Williams. Lord, we recognize that it was you that woke us up this morning and closed our right mind, and even with desire to come to the house of worship. We pray that there would be a unity a fellowship among the saints in this place. We pray that thou would bless Pastor Kibley in a very special way. We pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon him as he presents the word of God, that we be transformed by the message that we reflect the character of Jesus. 
that will leave with such Jesus joy that when we tell others they want to join us in this celebration. Now bless us and keep us as the angels and capital us and protect us as we worship here today. And may we live in such a way from day to day that when you come again to the clouds of heaven, that we shall be among the number that we save for eternity. Because we ask in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. <laughs> parts of church is offering, giving back to God. Um, so when I started this new walk with God, it was a couple years ago before I met my, actually really, really right before I met my husband. I actually had already met him, but before we started to date. And God came into my heart and he said there was a couple things that I needed to do. Um, and the first thing I needed to do was submit. And so as I submitted to him, I submitted my entire life to him, gave him everything. Um, I stopped worrying about who I was dating. I stopped worrying about where I was going, my degree. I stopped worrying about my job. And I started to deal, dig deep into God's word and get to know him. Um, and so then I came up with these things. Well, the Holy Spirit helped me come up with these themes of the year. So that year and a couple years following, the theme was submission. Um, Right before I had my daughter, the theme was obedience. And I had my daughter, then it got sick. And then, so this year, the theme is also obedience. And obedient, obeying God can be difficult sometimes um, when you know what you want to do and you're stubborn. So not wanting to get up because it's too early on Sabbath morning and not wanting to come to Sabbath school, but knowing that God requires a little bit of extra God requires sacrifice and getting up anyways, knowing that you don't want to be kind. You had a bad day, but you have to be nice because God requires it. That's a part of obedience. Well, another part of obedience is tithe and offering. Tithe and offering is important because it's what keeps the lights on. Um, but it's also important because God said so, period, point blank. Um, I say that to say he also says, delight yourself in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. Delighting yourself in him means to obey him. Um, and if he says, I will give you the desires of your heart, you don't have anything to worry about. You don't have to worry about that bill. You don't have to worry about that husband that's gonna appear. You don't have to worry about your kids. You don't have to worry about anything because you've delighted yourself in him and he's gonna give you the desires of your heart. And so I challenge you like I challenged you last time, give a little, don't just give because it's required. Give because he's asking you to. Give because he's asked you to obey him. Um, give because you love him. Give because you're in a relationship with him and that pleases him. Give because it's the right thing to do. Now, I'm gonna plug in the Pathfinders once more. They just asked for $40, of, $40 a week in order to make it to Oshkosh this year. Oshkosh is so important. When I was growing up, I had so many things to do. I didn't have to be a Pathfinder. I danced, I was an usher. I did so much. I was up on the podium. But here, now, we have, us, we have Pathfinders. One of the things that our kids do is Pathfinders. And we want to support them, and we want to support our parents. And so did you know that in your tithe and offering, I pay online, there is a section that you can give for your offering, and it, it's lined out. It says Pathfinders. And it's part, of your, it's part of your offering. It's part of what you should be giving God anyways. 
So I'm just asking you to give a little extra just for our Pathfinders because they need it. And they really, really, really are going to have the greatest time in Oshkosh. Um, they need us, and God needs you to you know, do the right thing. So may the deacons come forward. Please bow your heads. Abba, Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for this Sabbath day, for loving us, for providing for us, for getting here, getting us here today. Lord, every single one of us had gas in our car if we drove or somebody had gas in their car, whether they took the bus or they took their own car. Lord, you provided the means to get here, God. So I ask that you press upon the hearts of your saints to just give a little extra today and give what they can. If they don't have it, that's okay, Lord. But if they have it, place it upon their heart to just be giving. God, I love you so much. You have done so much for my family, for the people that I love, for my extended family, Lord. And I just want to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And as we are about to bring up this offering, God, I ask that you bless it as well. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. participate and however you feel in your praise if you want to stand up wave your hands if you want to sit down and meditate it's all good it's praise to God amen <laughs>
you are. Amen. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. As I listened to the words of this song and the direction he was going, we all feel it when we're going through our trials and they hurt and all. But then he stepped back and he said, you know what? Let me turn it into praise. Lord, you are good. You're better than good. When we sing praises and we recognize all the goodness in our life, it brushes or blows away the dark clouds. So Lord, you are good.
Let the church say amen. That's kind of weak. Let the church say amen. Now, I just got here. But the Apostle Paul said it's all right to covet good gifts. So these are my musicians. That's weak. These are my musicians. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I was thinking about Augustine and his words about music. He said that music is the art of controlling sounds properly. Not in a way that is necessarily technically correct but in a manner that satisfies the moral sense. So I praise God for these wonderful, dedicated musicians. I have, uh, the last week or two, maybe about a month, I'm gonna be transparent and tell you that I've been struggling with something. It has to do with this idea of letting go and letting God. I didn't realize how stuck I've been in the mud of being in control, I'm going to say person, I won't say freak. And I'm learning in this walk that God wants us to depend on him for everything. Even the things that we do very well. He is God, and he can do them better. I ask your prayers because my mind is being renewed. And if you've ever tried to refurbish something, you have to get all of the dirt out of the way before you get the spit and polish. A few years ago, the National Negro College Fund created a mantra that said, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm not sure where that starts and where that begins, but I am encouraged that if I can turn this mind around by the grace of God, I'll be a better person. Emmanuel Kant, a 
European philosopher said, and I quote, morality is not the doctrine of how we make ourselves happy, but how we make ourselves worthy of being happy. And so when I consider the hike that we've taken over the last three Sabbaths, for those of you who are visitors, we hiked through or navigated our way through Paul's writings to the Ephesians under the title of Password. And the thesis of that message is to remind all of us, regardless of denominational affiliation, that we are, in fact, members of the body of Christ. We found the password in Ephesians, one L, one Lord, one F, one faith, one B, one baptism. And I think we understand that we can no longer put the cart before the horse with our username. Our username as Seventh-day Adventists is just that. That's not in the scriptures, but 1L, 1F, and 1B is. So now we know how to unlock the code to Christian unity. The second week, we dealt with the subject oil change. And we witnessed David and his celebration of the images of the Jewish people coming together once a year, traveling to Jerusalem. David is so affected by this that he thinks of the oil being poured over Aaron's head, down the face, down the beard, into the clothes. And he lets us know that the unity of God's people when they are abiding together is like this oil running down. Last Sabbath we hiked through the subject anatomy of a contradiction. And we learned that this Jesus that we see in pictures hanging on walls in various churches and places seemed to posture him as this very effeminate looking blonde haired God. But the more I go through the scriptures, the more I hike through the gospels, I'm convinced that Jesus Christ was a radical, super radical son of God. And so we learned that if we're going to be followers of Jesus, we've got to pick up our cross and follow him, pay the dues, learn how to be radical, because that's the only way we're going to make it into the kingdom. And so today now, I would ask in reverence to the word that you stand and turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to ask everyone to 
stand, please, in reverence to the Word of God. We're reading Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look not only on, on only for his own interests but also for the interest of others. And finally, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak today under the title, Battle of the Bulge. Let's pray. Lord, we need you right now. I ask, dear God, in Jesus' name, that you would hide me behind the cross and let us see and hear Jesus. Take us to another place and we'll be careful to give you praise and honor for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. In December of 1944, history reminds us that Adolf Hitler attempted to split the Allied Allied armies in Northwest Europe by means of a surprise blitzkrieg or a sudden, swift, large scale offensive, which was intended to win in a quick victory. Caught off guard, American units fought desperate battles to stem the German advance. This battle would become known as the Battle of the Bulge, named by Winston Churchill. The name seems to suggest that by some that the real estate of the battle was bulging across Germany. France, and Belgium, also the Netherlands. The bulge here refers to the wedge that the Germans drove into the Allied lines. The Allied forces were desperate and almost had to give up except a group of dedicated guerrillas called the resistance of the French and their unity and their commitment. The battle 
was won by the Allied forces. Without them, the battle could have fallen into the hands of Adolf Hitler and the German army. Ladies and gentlemen, the Battle of the Bulge goes on today. It is the Battle of the Bulge for our minds. Let me ask you, have you lost your mind? Out on the 15 or one of these freeways when someone cuts you off, did you leave your mind out on the freeway? Have you given people a piece of your mind? on the way to church this morning. Giving people a piece of your mind, you don't have to mouth it. You can do like so many of us have done. We curse people out in Hebrew under our breath. I said curse because we do. And Jesus knows it. Have you been blowing your mind with psychedelic drugs or hallucinations through the things of this world to numb the physical pain, the mental pain, or societal pain that wars against your spirit and mind? The Philippians' biggest battle was not with their external circumstances but with those internal attitudes that destroy unity. Paul, at the time of this letter, was in prison. He writes it to Philippi, or to the Philippians, because Philippi was a mixture of races, cultures, and social class who were full of confidence and pride that bordered on arrogance. Paul talking about those who are striving to be like Jesus comes with the adverb, therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each other's better than themselves, esteem others better than, them, than themselves. Let each of you look out not only for your interests, but for the interest of others. I like the way the Amplified Version puts it. It says, by whatever there is, strengthening, controlling, and encouraging our relationships in him, by whatever persuasive incentive there is in love, by whatever participation in the Holy Spirit we share, and by whatever depth of affection and compassion and sympathy, fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind. Let me contemporaneously, audaciously, try to ride this rhythm that Paul has and say to us, keeping the Sabbath, eating fishettes and steakettes is not going to get us into the kingdom. We run around talking about we have the truth and yet we are separated. We're separated by class. We're separated by color. We're separated by culture. 
We are separated by worshipful norms. I have some friends in a certain region in this state. Good seven-day Adventists. But they wouldn't come in here on Sabbath. Because for them, their perception is that this rhythm is demonic. God is not in it. And I want to suggest to us this morning that until we respect each other's story of how we got over, how each one of us crossed the pond and got here to a place called America, until we can do that, we're not going to really understand why some of us worship and praise the Lord as we do. As long as I'm here with you, I will not be satisfied until this church looks like Dave Joseph's robe or the coat of many colors. I was so glad to hear the, the diversity in sound this morning. And then my two sisters sang the song and climbed some notes. I would leave my tonsils up on the ceiling trying to do that. And they didn't just sing it correctly. There was a spirit there that was working with their spirit. That's why there's high energy in here. Somebody said if we don't learn how to worship down here, we're not going to be ready to worship up in glory. question is, why is Paul placing emphasis on humility amongst these Philippians? I submit to you that there are salient or projecting problems or bulging problems with internal attitudes. There is bulging, the bulging effect of narcissism that protrudes from our internal thoughts. Oh yeah, I know I can play the piano. I know I can play the piano. And you know what? As long as I walk around with that kind of narcissism, it will have a spiritual effect, but it won't be the Spirit of God. And I submit to you, that we, as part and members of the body of Christ, must be emptied of self so that the Holy Spirit can take up residence in these bodies and God can be glorified. Sigmund Freud, fan, founder of psychoanalysis, has introduced to us two distinct salient projecting parts of our minds. Now, I'm not a psychologist, but he first talks about the id. He defines that the id is a part of the mind which instinctive impulses are manifested or shown. It's, it's how we have a bent towards certain things that affect our personal desires. There are those pleasure principles that are unique to us. And when it, does not, when it does not go our way, we change with these internal feelings that project not in but out. Again, let me be transparent. I, um, they say that all musicians have tempers. I don't have a temper, but I had to realize, and God showed it me, that I am temperamental. That means that right up here, there's a war going on, and I can look laid back and professional, but God knows there's something wrong with me. And if it goes unchecked, the ego will raise its ugly head. 
And all of you will want to throw song books at me. And rightly so. This idea of the ego being egocentric today is manifesting itself not only in religion, it's in politics, it is philosophical about um, our, our feelings racially, culturally, and ethnically. Some people refer to it as ethnocentrism, which has to do with who I am being central to everything, and everything else is built around that. Paul says to you and me, let each of us look not only out for our own interests, but for the interests of others. How do we do that? He, find, he says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Well, what about this mind of Christ Jesus? He didn't have an entourage when he came. He had no education in the classical sense. But the Bible says he made of himself no reputation. A reputation, as we know, is an estimation of what people say about us. And most of us believe it. And we continue to build on what other individuals think about us. Jesus instead became a servant. Not only did he feed the hungry and restore sight to the blind and heal the sick and resurrect the dead, but the Bible says he became a bond servant. He stooped to the lowest status on the social scale. He did not hang out with the big dogs, but he hung out with those whom society has dismissed in their circles. The prostitutes, the fishermen, the blind, the poor, the thieves, the murderers. I would suggest to you that I want to see us get to the place where there's some folks coming up in here on Sabbath morning. No, shirt, no shirts and ties, but some chains around their necks. Some folks who have, have been in, in drugs, but they're coming here because there's something happening at 31st Street on Sabbath morning. Something that they hear passing. Something they see in our, our, our personage that makes them want to come in and worship a man named Jesus that perhaps they have left along the way. And I would suggest to you that the bulge that we now have in our mind will change us. We will be changed because when we receive these people and we love them, and they return their love. We will feel better and we'll do better because it's not about what they have or the diplomas they have on their wall. It's about the fact that they are God's children. And as his children, they have the right through Jesus Christ our Lord to be here. And so today, let us start by enlisting in the army of Jesus Christ. Give it all to Jesus and he will fight our battles. All of the little unniceties that we don't see, but you look in the mirror and you know that they are there. Let us fight the battle of the bulge. Some of us are fighting the bulge over our belts. Others of us are fighting the bulge elsewhere, but that's not the bulge we're talking about. We're talking about the in, internal bulge, the battle of the bulge of ego. Instead, make Jesus Christ the center of everything we do. The battle of the bulge of the subconscious, make Jesus Christ central in our thoughts. 
the battle of the bulge of self. Take your burdens and insecurities to Jesus and leave them there. The battle of the bulge of your temper. Jesus said, I will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. The battle of the bulge of lust of the flesh. Battle of the bulge of the pride of life. Battle of the bulge of all your internal attitudes. The battle of the bulge of judging. Because Jesus Christ is soon to come. And I don't know about you, but I want to go. I want to take these glasses off, grow some hair on my head, get rid of some weight, and I want to walk down Holy Ghost Avenue. Maybe I'll hear my, my, my praise team singing. And we'll go on praising God throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Then what are you going to do about it? You're going to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Bow your heads, please. Lord, we have looked in the mirror this morning. And there's some things we know about ourselves but we really can't do anything about it except through Jesus Christ. So Lord, we ask that you will do what only you can do. Come in and take your celestial broom and sweep the cobwebs from our hearts. Clear our minds. Do what you have to do to prepare us for your soon coming. We look forward to seeing you, Lord. We can't wait to see the sky open up. And, and those of us that are alive will feel the ground drop from under our feet. Those who are dead, will be, we will meet in the air and we will go home and live with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. We praise you to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Let us um, stand for our closing hymn. 614, Sound the Battle Cry. We'll sing first and third verse.
you bow your heads with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, who have brought us here together another Sabbath, Lord, I ask that you be with each person within the sound of my voice and those that are watching online. I ask that you be with each member of our families near here and away from us, Lord. Keep us safe and ever in your care, Lord. Bless the ones that have lost loved ones recently, Lord. I ask that you place a hedge of protection of comfort and peace around their minds and souls and hearts, as well as the rest of us, Lord. Keep us safe and in your care in our goings and coming. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to worship you and thank you for all that are being honored this weekend and Memorial Weekend, Lord. Be with the family and thank you, Lord, for keeping the rest of the family safe and in your care as well. In your precious name I pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I fail to make an announcement uh, concerning board meeting tomorrow. Those of you who are on vacation this weekend, we are having board meeting um, at the usual place, 10 to 12, and we're looking forward to seeing you. Have a happy Sabbath.